Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us in our daily devotions. I hope you're keeping safe and well. This morning, we're going to talk about the U-turn emoji. Did you know there was a U-turn emoji? Well, we had our first visit the other night from the Tooth Fairy. Uh, it doesn't seem like that long ago from this wee tooth was just poking through. It doesn't seem like that long ago from the boys were crawling, that they were standing, that they were taking their first big steps. You know, maybe from the chair over the, to the city or something, they're taking their first big steps. Doesn't it seem like everything we're doing at the minute in life is taking big steps? You know, going to the shop or going to work or think of those on the front line, even just getting on public transport, even staying at home is taking a big step. The weight of all of this can certainly bear on our minds and on our emotions. I got up from watching the news the other night exhausted. Everyone's got different challenges to face, but I think we're all facing challenges. Well, in Psalm 73, we read of a man who was almost overwhelmed by the things that he was seeing all around him. But as God reveals his truths on the Asaph, he began to see things very differently. In fact, he took a complete U-turn. Throughout Psalm 73, Asaph says he felt like he was stumbling, slipping, troubled, plagued, persecuted, forgotten, pained, grieved, vexed. But in verse 23, he takes a complete U-turn as he allows God's truth to speak into his situation. Verse 23, Asaph says, Nevertheless, I am continually with you. Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, right? And we get that, don't we? It's easy to get that when things are good. We think things are so good. God's really blessing me. But when things aren't so good, we can say, Nevertheless, I am continually with you. In verse 23, Asaph says, You hold me by my right hand. You know, when I take my boys out, we're near a road or whatever, I hold on to that wee hand. If they're trying to get away somewhere, I hold on to that wee hand. Or if they're completely fell out with me, I hold on to that wee hand. Or if we're skipping along and everything's fine, I hold on to that wee hand. God takes our hand and he doesn't let go. Verse 24, Asaph says, You guide me with your counsel. We can read or listen to God's word. We can silence our hearts and hear the Holy Spirit. We can hear the counsel, the advice, the guidance of God Almighty. Verse 24, Asaph says, And afterwards you'll receive me to glory. We forget that, don't we? That this isn't it. The destination for the Christian is glory. The road might be smooth. The road might be bumpy. The road might be devastated. But the destination is glory. In verse 26, Asaph says, My flesh and my heart fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So God's with us. God holds our hand, guides us, leads us to glory. But God can actually give us in this moment strength that we don't necessarily have. Verse 28, Asaph says, It's good for me to come close to God. Find a moment today. And get close to God. It's good for us. Verse 28, Asaph says, I've put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. Asaph goes from declaring all his troubles to declaring God's wonderful works. And the key, the turning point, was trust. So realise God is with us. God will keep hold of our hand. God will guide us, lead us to glory, give us strength. It's good for us to come close to God. We can declare because God is trustworthy. Uh, we were litter picking in Sea Park recently with church and we came across a brook and everyone got across a different way. Uh, the younger people among us were just jumping right over. I didn't jump right over. Uh, some people were finding stepping stones and balancing their way over. But an older, wiser gentleman among us uh, found his way all the way down to where the brook was narrow and he just stepped over. And this is how I got over. I followed him. So I suggest that we can follow Asaph through these troubled times. From fear to faith. From worry 
to worship. From desperation to declaration. When I was reading over these wee notes last night, a uh, wee Matthew came in and he, he was making a, a computer game. He was making a world for him and Adam to join and to play on a computer. Not everyone understands that, but I don't even understand it, but he understands it. And he didn't want to lose everything that he'd made. And he said, Daddy, can you save this world for me? Because I've literally no idea how to do it. <laughs> I mean, he just encapsulated everything that I've been feeling and trying to say in a wee sentence. Daddy, can you save this world for me? Because I've literally no idea how to do it. So can we join in prayer and let that even maybe lead us into prayer? Lord, can you save this world for me? Because I've literally no idea how to do it. Would you look at our financial situation, Lord? The economy of our country? Would you look at our health? Lord, this virus? Lord, the trouble that we may be facing today, the road that we must walk through today. And Lord, would you save this world, Lord, because we've literally no idea how to do it. We thank you, Lord, that with God all things are possible. We thank you, Lord, that you love us and that you're interested in all of these things and that you really do come, Lord. Hold our hand. Guide us, lead us to glory, and bless us. Thank you, Lord, for all these things. In Jesus' name. So bless you this morning. Hope that helps in some way. Thank you. But this we know